Hello guys, welcome back to Dharma Geosphere. Today I'll be interacting with you on uh, another very important uh, topic in geomorphology that is uh, denudation chronology. Uh, some students have uh, found it quite difficult to get uh, uh, relevant content uh, related to uh, denudation chronology, though there is uh, one uh, textbook uh, which covers partly uh, some of the aspects uh, related to denudation chronology along with the erosion surfaces. Uh, but uh, I've tried to bring in all the uh, important uh, points related to denudation chronology. I'll try to explain what is denudation and what is chronology and what are the principles of uh, uh, denudation chronology and what are the methods, various methods used in denudation chronology. So as far as chronology uh, is concerned, uh, uh, in fact, whenever I take these offline classes, I tell my students first to um, remember the uh, geological time scale. Uh, it is also given in your uh, NCRT book class 11 uh, as uh, probably the second or the third chapter. So I would advise again um, all the civil services aspirants to be uh, thorough with the geological time scale uh, so that you can understand the chronology part quite well. Not only that, you can also understand the other topics like the uh, slope development and then uh, the erosion surfaces and the evolution of uh, the geomorphic cycles and the landforms, etc. So I suggest uh, um, the serious civil service students to uh, study these five topics uh, together, that is uh, the um, geomorphic uh, cycles and the evolution of landforms, slope development, uh, denudation chronology, uh, erosion surfaces and channel morphology. If you study all of them together, just make a table of what are the basic differences between all these five topics, then it is uh, um, easy to tackle any question uh, coming from any of these topics. So uh, geomorphology is all uh, related, but then uh, unfortunately uh, students pick up uh, um, selectively uh, some of the topics and read and then it can actually lead to confusion. So um, geomorphology itself uh, is, uh, uh, there is a very uh, chronological uh, evolution of uh, landforms. As we have seen uh, on the earlier, the Davison cycle, the uh, early stage, maturity, and uh, the old age. That is nothing again but uh, chronology. So I will uh, interact with you on uh, the various principles of um, den denudation chronology and then what are the various methods of denudation chronology. Here, uh, when you are writing the answers, it's better to always bring in examples, just not examples, but also case studies. Say case studies related to the denudation chronology of the peninsular India, the eastern coast, uh, and the, the western Ghat um, escarpment. And also, um, you can um, uh, use the case study of uh, the denudation chronology in Pyrenees uh, mountains. So just give one example of an international um, uh, landscape or a landform and give one of uh, the Indian. So that will bring in a, a very holistic and a rounded answer. Uh, and uh, of course you um, top it up with some good diagrams and uh, flow charts and all that to make the answer very impressive. So all those, uh, whatever I am uh, interacting with you is purely examination point of view. Sometimes uh, students get carried away reading the case studies because they find it very interesting. So don't waste time on that, just be very really focused. And then um, when you are uh, going through these uh, topics, the five topics which I have told, just sit back and think what are the possible questions that can come in this and then try to, in at least if not in writing, in the mind, try to formulate how best you can answer. Uh, that, so uh, basically there are five principles and five methods. I have um, gone through various uh, uh, journal and whatever relevant material is there, I have put the whole thing and uh, the essence of everything and then uh, divided into five principles and five methods. Five principles, uh, some five interrelated principles. One is that of uh, the concept or the doctrine of uh, uniformitarianism and then the Davisian cycle of evolution of landforms 
and third is palimpsest topography. In fact, there could be a short note or a small question, maybe 150 uh, words type on uh, palimpsest topography. And then uh, the fourth uh, important principle is the present is key to the past. Don't mix up between present is key to the past and uniformitarianism, though they are in a way related. And then um, the fifth uh, principle is the cyclic nature of the Earth's history. Mm, coming to the methods, um, the one of the uh, important methods is uh, the erosion or the planar surfaces. The other is river terraces. This is very interesting, very beautiful diagrams you can put in here. And then the techno, techno magnetic, uh, magmatic events. And then uh, wall deposit, uh, deposits in lakes. This is another very important way of doing denudation chronology uh, of uh, different periods of how uh, the landforms have evolved and then you of course have uh, the another very important one is that evolution of drainage how uh, say drainage patterns uh, can um, through denudation to the uh, evolution of uh, the drainage uh, can help in uh, deducing the denudation chronology of that particular area say for example the drainage in peninsular India. So like that um, you should write these two case studies uh, I will be uh, when I'm showing you the slides I'll tell you so you can just note down and um, deep dive and try to understand how denudation chronology in these two particular areas has evolved. One is the uh, um, the Pyrenees Mountains and the other is the Peninsular uh, India, East Coast of India. So guys, um, this is a very interesting topic. Uh, um, then, uh, so try to understand the concept. Okay? Don't, I find that students who come back to me with confusion of uh, having read uh, some English English because they just try to remember some sentences and see how they can write, but that is not uh, right. Uh, try to understand the concept and then if you read a comparative study of slope development, river morphology, and then uh, erosion surfaces and the cyclic nature of the evolution of landforms and the geomorphic cycles, they're all related and then you can be able to write a very good answer if even one a question comes in any one of these topics. Okay guys, now I'll um, show you some slides. Um, please do pay attention and uh, uh, according to me uh, whatever I have done here in this uh, part of the uh, PPT is, should be more than sufficient for you to um, write a very good answer in generation uh, chronology so don't unnecessarily waste time uh, reading for more material first try to grasp this and understand just remember a few important points and that should be uh, more than okay with you. okay guys So now we'll uh, <clears throat> try to understand what are the various principles and the various methods in uh, denudation chronology. But before that, we'll see what is uh, uh, this is the outline of my presentation. It includes introduction, what is denudation, what is chronology, then the principles of denudation chronology, the methods of uh, study of denudation chronology, then denudation chronology, a little uh, criticism on that. So what is denudation? I'm sure you would have all read during your prelims on the mains exams uh, about uh, what is denudation. But remember, what you have to remember here is it also includes mass waste. Mass wasting, mass wasting does not um, actually involve any of these uh, agents, but it is due to gravity that uh, along the slope uh, there is a removal of the uh, material. And then uh, geochronology is a field of scientific investigation concerned with determining the age and history of rocks. You know the entire geological time scale is also nothing but uh, deduced mostly from geochronology or the way the sediments have been deposited. You should remember that the oldest is at the bottom and then the age keeps on uh, increasing as you move up uh, uh, <coughs> the rock strata. So here you can see it is Proterozoic and here it is uh, the Paleozoic sediments. The various sediments are deposited. So the way they are uh, deposited uh, in a sequence from bottom to up is nothing but uh, the way geochronology is measured. It need not be only by determination of uh, the ages, which is of course the most accurate, but this needs to also be correlated with the various 
uh, sediments or the uh, lithology or the uh, rock types and it could also be uh, by um, determining the age of fossils and the evolution of fossils it can also be determined through the uh, drainage patterns it could also be determined through the magmatic uh, the techno magmatic events that is magmatic events or the volcanic eruptions which has happened because of uh, tectonism it can also uh, um, do um, measure to wow deposits in lakes wherein you can find these concentric rings just like the rings on the tree trunk uh, uh, which measures the uh, age of the tree similarly the um, uh, wow deposits are uh, deposited in a um, uh, regular pattern which you can uh, see whether it is deposited in summer or winter and then and deduce the degradation chronology by studying those things. Similarly, you can also use the, the drainage patterns to understand and deduce the degradation chronology. So first we will understand the uh, principles and then we will see what are the various methods. So, um, for what is degradation chronology? It's just think about a branch of uh, landform studies that deals with the historical development of landscapes by denudation, especially during pre quaternary time. So, evidence for development stages is provided by studies of erosion surfaces, the deposits mantling them, drainage patterns, strong stream long profiles, geological structures, and various other methods. So, it's basically uh, an attempt to reconstruct the erosional history of the earth's surface. Erosional history, the erosion surface is the almost the last stage of which uh, the cycle landforms develop, that is the planar or uh, the plain surface. So basically, we are trying to understand the historical uh, view of uh, the Davisian cycle of erosion. So during the first half of 20th century, a historical approach was uh, used to understand the evolution of land. Uh, landscape but then uh, slowly uh, newer methods uh, evolved on how contemporary landscape has been uh, captured from uh, uniform and almost featureless or planar surfaces. So the, these are the five principles of denudation chronology. So the first is uniformism. You all know that is a doctrine suggesting that the earth's geological process that acted in the same manner and with essentially the same intensity, same intensity in the past as they do in the present, and that that uniformity is sufficient to account for all the geological change towards the geological time scale. Example: You can see a cliff at the east of uh, the Sikar point, uh, showing the near horizontal. Uh, you can see the near horizontal uh, red sandstone layer above vertically tilted. You can see this uh, tilted uh, gravy clay rocks. So, this is an important um, diagram uh, which you should remember. And in any of those five topics you get, try to put in this and uh, explain one of the most important locations that is uh, Jedburgh, Scotland, where uh, Hutton said that the location at times been under the sea. And the bottom section of the rocks in the image is the oldest. This is it. And then uh, here, rock layers formed over an immense amount of time were tilted to be almost vertical. And then they were uplifted as they rose out of the sea. And then they were then eroded. Once they have been uplifted, they were eroded, forming a layer immediately above them. You can see this is the layer which has been formed after the uh, uplift. And the land then sank below the sea again. And more horizontal layers were. Uh, form for a long period of time. Then the rocks then emerge again from the sea. So this is the um, um, cyclic way of explaining how uh, the rocks evolved uh, over time. So this uh, uniformitarianism is also a concept that natural geological process which occur today occurred at approximately the same rate and in 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 intensity as that have been in the distant past. So you can also see an example of uh, a flowing lava uh, and then which lava uh, slowly cools and it forms a uh, basalt uh, uh, volcanic rock. The uh, second principle is the deviation model of cycle of evolution of landforms. According to uh, Davies, uplifted landmass undergoes sequential development. This you all know and uh, this is how the cycle of erosion happens. You have the uh, youth stage, maturity stage and the old stage and again the old stage gets uplifted and then further gets eroded. 
But the basic difference between Davis and the other geomorphic cycle is Davis believed that the erosion uh, starts only after the upliftment ends. But it is not so, upliftment and erosion and uh, the transportation and deposition occur simultaneously in what uh, later they have said as polycyclic landforms. So this is the uh, graphical model, you can see the youth maturity and old age. Then uh, this is an important uh, concept and try to please understand this, palimpsest topography is Palimpsest is again scrapped again, and it used, uh, it was earlier, it is word, it was used by historians to refer to manuscripts which are erased and written over the top uh, repeatedly. So in uh, geomorphology, palimpsest is a feature composed of super superimposed structures created at different times, and uh, modifying the uh, previous features, destroying old features, and reproduces new reliefs on older surfaces, just like this. So uh, um, this is the uh, illustration you can uh, draw uh, when you are talking about the palimpsest, uh, uh, these um, of, of different ages. Um, you can show uh, uh, like this: landscape element, geological, geomorphic, and uh, human. So here is another example of a buried tree in Joggins Formation, uh, Nova Scotia where the trunks of tree ferns are buried in their upright growth and then here is a, um, uh, a total picture of uh, the uh, palimpsest uh, landscape elements in a glaciated uh, valley you can see A, B, C and D uh, A is the pre-quaternary river valleys uh, cut into oleocene uh, volcanic bedrock uh, B is a glaciated valley Walls in size during late uh, Wisconsin, and then uh, C is uh, vegetated uh, mid, mid channel uh, gravel bar, and then D is the present day braided stream. Again, this is nothing but channel morphology. Fourth is the present is key to the past. Yes, one example is you all know that coal uh, is mostly the remains of fossil plant material buried in swamps. It's so much of little oxygen that even bacteria can't survive to build. So this implies that climate at the time was very warm and wet. So this is how you deduce that uh, during that time, uh, this is what it is and this is how chronologically the coal beds evolved. So it took 20 million years for the low-lying wetland forests and peat bogs of the late Carboniferous times to build up one of the most world's uh, largest coal supplies. So it's taken humans only 200 years to burn up most of them. <laughs> So this is an example of uh, the sedimentary uh, sequence formed on uh, several different occasions during several different times. You can see the ancient lava flow and the recent lava flow and this sedimentary strata and the dike intruding it. So the dike which is intruding is the uh, latest or the younger one and the sediments which are lying below that is this is the ancient one, these are the oldest and this is the youngest. So this is how you should deduce uh, the uh, chronology based on uh, the uh, erosion uh, deposition and also can include transportation. This is the cyclic nature of uh, the earth history. I've already talked to you about the Sikar point. This again you can use it as a case study because you find many of the principles all in one uh, particular landscape. Uh, here James Hutton says there is no vestige of a beginning and no prospect of an end meaning. It is always cyclic. It is not that once a penny plane is formed, it remains like that. It again gets uplifted and again gets eroded. Then it gets um, transported and then gets deposited. So cyclic concept was postulated by James Hutton when he proposed the concept of cyclic nature of the Earth's history and the dictum of uh, the no vestige of the beginning, no prospect of an end, and also the present is key to the past. So this is the uh, basic cycle of uh, erosion. Um, the, from the heat inside the earth, it gets converted into a rock, and then the rock gets uplifted, heated further, and it gets uplifted. Once it is uplifted, it is eroded, and then it is transported to sea, and then again it gets deposited in layers in the sea, and then again it gets so this is the Hutton's um, cycle uh, of uh, erosion and uh, this is what uh, you should draw. 
Then coming to the methods of uh, denudation chronology, uh, first is the erosion surfaces and planar surfaces, then the river terraces, tectonomagmatic events, valve deposits, and evolution of drainage. So I'll quickly uh, show you the uh, slides. As you all know, planar landform erosion surfaces are often used as temporal, that is time chronology markers in denudation chronology. These surfaces are interpreted as a result of long-term weathering and denudation controlled by specific base level within a given time interval. Characteristics of the long tectonic stability. Only when there is a tectonic stability, you find these uh, erosion surfaces. That's why when I talked about erosion surfaces in your uh, the um, geography optional question, I was uh, uh, telling you that it is very difficult to um, identify and uh, use erosion uh, surfaces where the land has been uplifted or when there, where there has been a lot of tectonic movements or where there has been splitting of uh, the continent like in Madagascar or uh, maybe even uh, the uh, split uh, happening in the um, uh, Proterozoic, uh, where there was a split of uh, the African continent, etc. So, uh, then the elevation land, uh, land surfaces are nothing but the planar surfaces, where studied of Parana la Plate Basin in southern Brazil. Uh, this you can use as a case study, wherein uh, the erosion or the denudation resulted in these erosion surfaces uh, from Eocene. Miocene and Pleistocene, and which was, uh, these were uh, deduced by the planar surfaces, but then it was supplemented and supported by the argon dating in each of these periods in each of the sediment. So that is how you cannot simply see, um, um, look at the uh, sediments and uh, their order of deposition and deduce, but it should also be supported by some kind of a, some method of uh, dating of those. And these then you uh, try to merge and then uh, finally deduce the geochronology. So this is the uh, radar to topography mission. Nowadays it's very easy uh, by this uh, radar topography uh, mission, DEM based mapping of uh, the erosion surfaces. Through this you can identify through the various colors how are the erosion surface or uh, the denudation. So this is how uh, you can entirely uh, um, deduce the um, uh, denudation chronology. And similarly, uh, in the East uh, Pyrenean uh, Mountains, the prominent stratigraphy was of erosion surfaces we used to relate systematically link the erosion surfaces to uh, geological archives of the landscape. So this is the example of the case study, uh, the inversion of uh, East Pyrenean tectonics. Uh, this is the uh, sediment based on the sedimentary basin analysis. This is a paper, a benchmark paper in 2008 related to the denudation chronology in the East Pyrenean erosion surfaces. So this you can use um, as an example, or also as a case study in both the erosion surfaces as well as uh, in the uh, denudation chronology. And then the river terraces, these are uh, very important in, because they are formed in many ways and in several environmental setups. Chronology of abandoned uh, river terraces uh, has been studied in many places and using a various variety of uh, denudation chronology techniques. So this is the Blue Moon Valley, Jade Dragon Snow Mountain, a really beautiful region in China where uh, the um, denudation chronology has been deduced by these river terraces. So river terraces is basically formed when vertical section, when vertical erosion occurs in a flood plain that was previously being formed. River then cuts downwards and abandons the old flood plain, and then uh, the river uh, starts to erode down to a new level, again creating another um, uh, surface, as you can see, at the river terraces. Then the new flood plain is uh, created. The older the terrace, the higher it is, and the younger the terrace, the lower it is. You can see, uh, in fact, the whole uh, um, the uh, London city uh, is actually built on the ter terrace, river terrace of the river Thames. So similarly, denudation chronology in Bushankas in southeastern Australia, uh, New South Wales was also deduced from uh, river terraces levels 
uh, wherein they uh, correlated the existence of major sub-horizontal uh, cave level uh, indicators uh, and then showed uh, evidence of uh, still stand and in the form of fluvial and marine terraces thus um, correlating uh, the uh, cave levels with the terraces. This is another very important uh, case study of how uh, denudation chronology was uh, deduced from this Dushan caste. So this is the um, Australian Dushan caste and this is how uh, the denudation chronology um, of uh, this entire area was uh, deduced. Then the third is the tectonomagmatic events. Tectonomagmatic events, uh, um, here um, a major tect uh, tectonic and a magmatic event uh, occurred in the continental margin of the western peninsular India, uh, where the denudation chronology of the continental margin since the early Mesozoic was traced by reconciling the uh, geomorphic uh, features not only just geomorphic features but here also the uh, various sediments enable the uh, use of uh, geochronological uh, techniques and that of uh, appetite fishing tracking data so they reconcile uh, both the data and deduce the geochronology so it was shown that in peninsular india as is common in other rifted margins the morphology is characterized by a low-lying coastal plateau separated from an elevated uh, inland plateau by an erosionally controlled escarpment of the western guards. You know how steep that uh, escarpment is. Maybe you have seen uh, that in um, some of the movies. You may have seen in uh, the English movie Mission Impossible. You can see that huge escarpment from where he dies. That is uh, Western Guards is another outstanding example of an escarpment. So this uh, study highlights that the denudation rates remain extremely low but peaked at uh, 130 uh, million years because of rifting of Antarctica and again peaked in 80 million years during rifting of Madagascar. So you should understand and uh, relate uh, rifting with the uh, higher rates of denudation because once there is uh, an uplift after the rifting you have a surface which is ready to get uh, weathered, um, eroded and then can finally get transported. So this is how you should use your, apply your mind and see when during the geological time scale, where are, where are the times of uh, rifting. So whenever there was rifting, there was upliftment and when there was upliftment, there was erosion. And when there was ero erosion, that is when you start calculating the denudation chronology or the, uh, finally the erosion surfaces. So this is the uh, rifting movement which causes the buoyant magma, magma below to rise and fill the uh, spaces at the lower pressure and that is how the also the, because of the magma the land gets uplifted and then it is ready to get eroded. Uh, another important uh, method of deducing uh, denudation chronology is the wav deposits in lakes. Wav is nothing but a full circle and it is a sedimentological equivalent of uh, the rings you find uh, on the trees and similarly you can see the various uh, warp deposit uh, um, or the warp sequence uh, laid one over the other uh, it's kind of an annual layer of sediment that forms in distinct layers and a single deposit can be occurring in winter and one in uh, summer so this is how you can see the uh, deposits based on this uh, you can use this tool to determine the precise temporal changes almost down to each season this is useful in particular to address questions like climate change pollution etc and then uh, this is uh, the wav uh, um, sediments inside the uh, lake you can see how well they are deposited and then there is also a similar um, method called the uh, lichenometry. This is uh, like how the valves are deposited, lichens are also deposited. So you can uh, measure the size of the items uh, of these uh, lichens and then plot uh, with the um, unknown aged objects and you can deduce uh, the denudation uh, chronology uh, based on the occurrence of uh, um, uh, these uh, lichens. The evolution of drainage is very important uh, because it is, uh, the drainage is uh, created by the stream erosion and the entire denudation history is recorded in a uh, drain, um, drainage pattern because of the underlying uh, rock structure and uh, the kind of erosion that takes place and based on the agent of uh, erosion the denudation history of continental margin of western peninsular India was deduced 
because the uh, Western Ghats uh, escarpment uh, formed the main drainage divide of the peninsular drainage and uh, the evolution of drainage patterns was uh, deduced and through that uh, the denudation chronology of the area was. Then another uh, um, place in Deccan Plateau and also the Palgat Gap, this is the uh, Deccan Plateau landsat image and this is the Palgat Gap um, uh, landsat image of the uh, drainage through the flow routing algorithms, uh, the denudation chronology has been deduced here. So this is the drainage pattern of peninsular India developed due to mantle plume activity which showed an asymmetric relief because of the slow upliftment and tilting towards uh, the high western Ghats escarpment uh, towards the flood plains of the eastward flowing rivers. So these arrows here they show the uh, width of the continental shelf developed due to this uh, plume activity. So denudation chronology uh, has its own drawbacks, uh, anything related to the study of landforms is speculative because you need to bring in all the elements together but the Davisian geogram, geogram, geomorphic model uh, was essentially qualitative and is actually very difficult to test on uh, scientific rigor and uh, there's two main uh, issues uh, related to the speculative nature of this denudation chronology are related. First is that the ge geological evidence needed to date the surface is often missing. You cannot date every surface unless they have zircon, monazite or apatite, suitable minerals which can be dated. So many uh, of these landforms have uh, rocks which may not have this datable material. In that case, it becomes very difficult. You may have in a sequence of five, there may be two uh, uh, sediments or rock layers which may have the dating material, but the others don't have. Normally, the geomorphologists uh, try to deduce or uh, speculate and uh, try to extrapolate based on the available dates, uh, but that is not always accurate. And that is the drawback, one of the drawbacks of denudation chronology. The other is the old surfaces are commonly modified by subsequent wasting and the original form and height cannot be easily interpreted. As a result, in the, for the same uh, land form, you can have uh, multi multiple modes of origin based on the a single surface uh, because they are dated differently because either you do not have the um, uh, prospective uh, dating material or it could have been an inversion of topography or it could have been subsidence or uplift due to uh, um, tectonic movements. So uh, these are the drawbacks um, that also you please remember when you are writing the answer. So um, try to um, read denudation chronology along with the slope development, uh, channel morphology and also the uh, erosion surfaces. I will cover the other two topics very soon. So you will have a broad picture of all the five topics then just make one chart uh, and then put down the important uh, or distinct uh, points uh, in each of these and then uh, try to remember but if you get a question in any one of them try to use the case studies or examples of uh, the others because they are all related as you keep reading through this I am sure you will understand uh, how to use these examples and diagrams uh, to effectively write your answers so that is all guys as far as the invitation chronology is concerned I am sure uh, whatever um, I have given here uh, as a first cut should be more than sufficient for you at least at, least at this stage and then we will move on forward try to um, uh, grasp and understand whatever I have given here and then uh, we will try to move forward um, and we will catch up uh, soon with the other topics. So all the best, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay focused and we will catch up soon. Bye.